All right, this is Benji, and I forgot your name already, sweetheart. Macy. Um, Macy. Macy's, oh, sit. And this is their roadmap to success. Um, so basically, we primarily worked here with Benji, uh, the Benji. And uh, as you saw in the video above, he you know, has some issues with his video with his kennel. Now, we edited that one down, and it took a lot longer. So I want the Guardians to practice that, because that's really going to make an impact on practicing him being calm in the kennel while they're home, and the door is open. Gra gradually elongate that. So remember, the first stage is all he's got to do is sit down and immediately gets out. And keep practicing that and use the tennis racket until he starts sitting within 10, 15 seconds. Once you get to that point, then I want you to take a step backwards. So we're going to take left foot, right foot, and only step back like a, a, about six inches. And if he tries to come forward, rush forward or move that tennis racket right there. And eventually, and you'll have to go back and forth, back and forth, but eventually you take a whole step back and you'll stay there seated. Then you go two, and then and then wait about five seconds, then invite him out. Then try to go 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds at that distance. Don't move to two or three steps because once you get too far away, they start dashing out. And once they start dashing out, they'll do it quite a bit more. Sit. Oh, that was about the same time. Yeah. Remember to do the uh, coffees for closers. So if he, they would have not sat at the same time, I would have just given just the, just the leader. But since you did such a good job, you get one too because you did it at the same time. Um, so uh, we talked about increasing exercise. Remember those creative ways of exercising, the laser, the stairs with the retractable leash, um, the set games, uh, as well as, uh, well, fetch, I guess, isn't one for them. Um, let me see, other things, and walk, you can do, certainly do walks. I'm not saying walks are bad, but it's just not a very efficient way of doing it. But start that exercise journal, try to get the exercise every two to four hours, or you know, map it out, and after a while you'll understand if it's got, how often frequently it's gotta be. Now for him, because he's spending eight hours in the kennel, if we can arrange, I think we got an arrangement where he's gonna have somebody come by and work with him a little bit, and that way he's only in the kennel for about three and a half hours stretch, out for an hour, three and a half hour stretch, that'll make things a lot easier. And if we incorporate some daycare at Dogtopia, that will also really help. Um, okay, what else? Um, we've talked about uh, some rules. Um, rules uh, such as, well, one of them, I don't think I went over this, that you guys don't have, uh, I guess, I guess there's a door outside too, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you could actually do this, um, just make sure maybe somebody's down there. What I usually do is I go to the door and I tell the dog to sit once. And the dog has three seconds to sit. If it doesn't sit within three seconds, then I walk away and sit down somewhere. Wait one minute and set a timer. After one minute, go back to the door and tell them, sit. Don't sit within three seconds, walk away, just sit. Walk away for two minutes. Next time I walk away for four minutes, then for eight minutes. I keep doubling the length of time until eventually when I go to the door and I say sit, the dog's butt hits the ground. Then I open the door immediately. As soon as they sit, that's the reward to go outside. And that's why, because you guys, it's an apartment, but you have a protection they're not gonna get out in the street. Uh, eventually what will happen is the dog, when this is not up, will go sit next to the door or sit right here as a way of saying, I'd like to go outside, sit. Mm -hmm. Very smart, buddy. Uh, all right, so other rules. Um, uh, I want the guardian uh, not being allowed in the furniture, get the letter X, M-A-T-S. You would probably have to get about six of those, but again, that makes just a lot easier. Uh, let me see, what else? Uh, not being allowed to be in the kitchen when we're preparing food, not be around on the carpet around the table when we're eating food. You're gonna use those escalating consequences, specifically the first one and the third one marching at the dog to enforce that boundary. Um, you're spazzing out a little bit. Um, and then, uh, but remember to first teach the dog how to leave the area with positive reinforcement. If we want him off here, I'm gonna touch the nose of the treat, toss it right off the side. When they get off of the carpet, I say the word out. Do the same thing with the kitchen, with the bedroom, and everywhere else. Then once you've done that with crash, with all the rooms, then go the, re, re, do the whole circuit again, but this time throw the treat into the room and say kitchen or dining room or whatever it is. Um, yes, all right, she said I want a little bit more bark. Um, and she's not barking, so we'll give her some bark. Um, all right, so other rules, um, uh, making sure uh, that we stop free feeding the dogs. Instead of free feeding the dogs, sit, sit. Uh, we didn't give you very much, but that was kind of second, so normally I wouldn't pay that, but she's a sweetheart, so we're paying her uh, But make sure we're going to stop free feeding them. So we're going to give them each a dog bowl and feed them in the kitchen so you can defend the area. Prepare, put the food in the bowls. Don't let them in the kitchen using that third consequence. I have videos for this. If you can't remember how to do it, message me and I can share a video showing you how to do this. Um, and then basically, you eat something first and five more bites, then invite her in, and when she's in, he's not allowed to be in. And he will start pushing once you go switch from a free feeding to a structured feeding situation. While she's eating, he can't intimidate her. When she gets done, she has to leave, and then he gets in and he gets to eat by himself. And if she's eating uh, and she eats half her bowl and walks away, Pick up the remaining bowl, dump it empty, and put the empty bowl back down. She'll come and lick it probably, 
and then she leaves the area and she doesn't eat again until the next meal. Eventually, they'll start cleaning their plate. Um, all right, um, he's like, I'm gonna get back on the couch. Uh, and definitely don't allow him on the table. Remember, burning energy is a, way, a form of currency. So if he gets up on that table and you don't immediately get up and start moving over towards him, he's gonna say you think it's cool. So uh, now eventually, if you see him running over, you know he's gonna jump, stop him when he's here, hiss at him here before he breaks the rule. Uh, remember to use the four escalating consequences. If you forget what those are, message me. I have a video that can, I can go over those with you and everybody watching, else watching at home. You have to hire me to learn what those are. Um, let me see, what else? Um, God, you're very intense. Um, uh, practice, uh, let me see, uh, uh, let me see, other, uh, uh, practice petting with a purpose and passive training. Remember, petting with a purpose, if he jumps up or nudges me or paws at me for attention, I'm going to give him a counter order, say sit, pat him under his chin, say the word sit, and only the word sit. And try to pet on a chin to facilitate the nose up, so that's why dogs feel good about themselves. Um, and try to avoid patting on top of the head because that creates a down nose orientation. You can scratch their butt or anywhere else, just try to avoid patting on top of the head. Um, and then, uh, and once he, uh, so he has to do something, or she has to do something to change her state in order to earn that affection. And what she does, pet her on her chin and say it, and if you say sit once and she doesn't sit, then lean back, pull out your phone and be doing other things. Remember, play a little bit hard to get with your dogs, especially the next two, three weeks. Um, I want them to kind of feel like if I don't pet, Right now, if I don't do what the humans want, they pet me anyway, so what's my motivation? Well, once that stops, well, you better bet I'm gonna put this cute Shiba Inu butt down on the ground quick so I can get that affection. Um, let me see, what else? Um, uh, uh, if we came in the room and we see somebody petting, we suspect they're petting without a purpose. The dog's standing, I'm petting, and they say, paycheck, I stop petting, I say, sit. And if she doesn't, then I just go back to do what I'm doing. If she didn't sit, then I would pet her, and then I would explain to the person, I asked her to sit before you came in the room. Uh, remember not to pet when they're doing anything you don't want. If they jump up on you, they're nudging you, they're barking. When, she, when he yodels, I would actually pet him and say, yodel, sit. That's passive training, which we're about to talk about. Um, but when he yodels, it's going to be great if you could do that on command. Mm -hmm. This is the same way of teaching a dog to speak. So every time he yodels, come up with a word that you want to assign. Call it sing, because that would be kind of funny. <laughs> I actually have taught my dog to grumble, so if it's your birthday, I usually say, I pull out my camera, and this is the hand signal I use, I've assigned now. And so I'd be like, hey, Quest, what's going on? And I'm behind the camera, and he goes, oh, yeah, I know it's Terry's birthday. It's not nice to ask a girl how old she is, Quest. I am not a cheap bastard. I got her a good gift. And I do this long video, and then I post it on their Facebook page. People think it's hilarious. That will be much cuter with the yodel. So um, uh, so make sure you do uh, uh, use passive training for that. Passive training right here, she sat down, I immediately started petting her. Remember, rewarding the dog for doing the things that you want will motivate them to do those at other times or ways to prepay for attention. And that's what the dog will start doing. Come. That's passive training right there. So, uh, but eventually your dog will start with petting with purpose coming sitting in front of you to prepay for that attention. Remember that boosts their self-esteem. It helps reinforce that you're the leader. It helps respect, respect, uh, in general respect for you as the authority figure. And it helps them practice that behavior, which will make it easier for them to do it on walks and other different uh, situations that are a little bit more excitable. Um, what else do we go over? I think that's just about it. I can't think of anything else. Am I, anything else you can think of? Just a little bit of walking. Uh, uh, for the uh, walking? Well, uh, for the loose leash, um, so message me if you want, and I can share those videos with you of walking around the dog. Remember, if you want to do some clicker training before you do it, you'll have to do this about four or five days. Get about 10 treats, throw them down in the treat, and every time the dog clicks, uh, licks it up, click. After a while, you, the click means I'm about to get a treat, and then you don't have to do it anymore. Then what you do is you walk around, in a, for him, in a counterclockwise circles. If she's on the other side, for her in a counterclockwise circles. And as soon as the dog looks at me, I click it first. And then once it takes one step towards me, I click and each I click and then give a treat when it looks at me. Then I keep on walking in a circle, hopefully not getting dizzy. And then when it takes a step towards me, I click and give it a treat. And then two steps and then three steps. And after a while, you're walking a circle or walk, and I walk around your, your dining room table and the dogs start practicing healing in the home. Use your bedrooms. I don't know how, uh, I've never actually been back there. Uh, but use those areas and that way you're helping the dog practice uh, walking in the heel position without the distractions of being outside and without pulling on the leash. Um, what do you say? Did you have fun? She's like, no, I didn't get any of the treats. I got very little bark and I didn't get as much attention as my buddy did. That's because you're the better behaved dog. So you should just appreciate that because you're so, and see how I'm petting her? She's putting her nose more and more in the air. She feels good about herself. So remember, try to pet her on the chin whenever possible. All right, well, we need dogs for the sign off on this thing. Can you come over here?
I bet you we can get somebody to come over here with a sound list. Yes. So these sounds, uh, using a, uh, just when you get rid of a bag of treats like this, keep it with you. When you're on a walk and the dog's not paying attention, you go, you'll get their attention real quickly. Well, this is Benji, the Basenji, Benji. And this is Macy, hey, Macy, the Sheba. And this is their roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.